Okay, so I'm a little late to the party on this one, but I just wanted to do my own version of a review on Resident Evil. I've seen lots and lots of reviews on the overall game, on the story, on the gameplay, duration, uh, mechanics, all those different things. Um, and I've seen people doing technical reviews on the performance across different systems. That's pretty common. But I guess what I'm not seeing is a review of the environment and the props because for me that's where the man hours are in this game and that's where this game is not only its best but it's the best it's kind of the best in the whole industry for me it's kind of a pinnacle right now of where we are in terms of environment and prop design there's really not much out there that's better than this um, and I just wanted to go over a number of scenes and just talk about how they're how they're going about doing all these different things. So I, I'm an amateur game developer, um, and my emphasis is also on environment and prop design. Um, but being an amateur, I don't know everything, and I'm I'm gonna all I'm gonna do is look at the game and make some best guesses on how they're doing certain things. So some things are gonna be obvious to me. Some things are going to be guesses, but don't take my word as gospel. I kind of ha I kind of did some research on this and looked around and I could see they've got some videos. So I'll finish the game and they've got some videos where they show some of the mocap stuff and some of the concept art, which is traditionally what people would want to see when it comes to films, which makes total sense. But I think there's a big niche here for people doing people looking at how the game is constructed, how the game world, um, like the lighting, the landscape, the props, um, the particle effects, those kind of things are, are constructed. Because basically that is all you're looking at the entire time you're playing the game. You know, the other parts of it are kind of, you know, the voice acting, the mocap, the concept art are all kind of hidden under the hood. Whereas what you're actually looking at is the result of people doing prop and environment work. But anyway, I'll jump in. Annoyingly, there's no chapter select. <laughs> I should have figured this out. I should have checked it out before because I kind of raced to finish the game in the last few days. And um, I expected to get maybe a chapter select or some way of jumping in in different scenes, but there's no way. So I can only either start a new game or load some of the sporadic saves that I've made throughout. So I'm just going to go in order basically till I get bored. Okay, so I'm going to start in the Winter's home, even though it's not a, a very good example of what else you see throughout this game, it still shows off a lot of the prop work and the environment work. So I think that process overall for every single scene in the game, light-wise, is they have a mixture of baked lighting and real-time lighting. So I think the bake is just doing something very, very simple. It's just illuminating the soft areas that are very hard to represent without some kind of real time bounce lighting. So out here in these dark corners where there's just generally a soft amount of bounced light, that's the bake. So that's done beforehand, as in it's not being calculated on the fly in the game. What they do is they they have a system which takes the overall light and it bakes it to the textures. So some of the light in the scene is actually already baked before you run the game. The rest of the light and shadows are happening in real time. So they can kind of react to what's going on if there's movement in a scene. So if I walk around this table, for example, you can see I cast a shadow and it interrupts other shadows in the scene. So that's that's the real time lighting, meaning basically meaning that it's calculated frame by frame as you're playing the game. Because because it's calculated in real time, it means there's a limit on how much light can be thrown around at any one time before it begins to negatively impact performance. Um, so you'll probably notice that in any given scene, uh, there's only ever a few light sources and that those light sources won't overlap one another 
because once you start overlapping light there's a lot more calculations that the engine has to do to make that all work out so you'll see here although there's it looks like there's three light bulbs there's actually only one light emitting source but you you can't really see that so you can see in the shadows there's only one shadow you're not getting the triple shadow that you would actually get in reality you know like for example you can see the the shadow of the um spokes on that chair are only cast once that's because there's only one caster beneath just hanging beneath that light fitting there there's a model and then there's the actual light source so you can see that those shadows go so far before actually this plant's got no shadow because there's no real-time light source hitting it although it should do it if it if if this were reality it should be a shadow going to the left and to the right but of course that's not hap that's not happening what's happening is each of these light sources is is actually a, a spheroid so it's a sphere of influence and that sphere tapers off the further you get away from the light until it's zero basically so and the same for this and the same for this one in here you can see that they don't overlap and this lamp doesn't even cast any shadows it should be you know there should be a shadow underneath that if it were again if this were in reality it should be a shadow underneath that stool but there isn't so these are all kind of optimizations that developers make to to make the light realistic enough but to not eat into the performance the skill is in doing that and and making it so you don't notice it another thing that they're doing everywhere you go in the village uh, as in the whole game not not specifically the village location there's a volumetric fog effect going on uh, it's a little bit hard to explain what that is but basically it's something that mimics particles or moisture particles in the air just like fog so if you go outside on a foggy day the the thing that's obscuring your vision over distance is actually light refracting within water particles in the air so the more water particles plus light equals a reduced visual distance what's happening is they've got a very very they've got a volumetric fog volume which is a simulation of that particle effect that i was explaining uh, but it's set to zero so if you're just looking in a corner you don't see it you don't see any kind of foggy effect but under lights what they can do is their lights can it can be set to influence the fog a lot more um, so you get this kind of haze beneath lights where the light is is playing around with the fog volume it's in, uh, underneath these as well you can see there's actually a cone of light that's being emitted it's actually just an area of influence that spreads through the uh, through the volume and I think what that goes on to create is a sense that there's oxygen in the room that there's atmosphere you know so Mia is cooking when you cook the process emits some kind of vapor into the air and that's what you're getting you're just getting that level of realism very subtle but there it creates a sense that there's actually oxygen or air or atmosphere in the room which an empty room you know a sheer digital clear room just wouldn't illustrate so then the next thing yeah the next thing is ambient occlusion now ambient occlusion is another real-time process that um, looks for crevices and, and, and cavities so let me see if I can find a good example of, of it happening um, but basically what it does is it creates inset shadows um, in cavities to stop corners looking like they're just meeting and the light isn't playing within them okay so I'm upstairs and this is a good example of um, ambient occlusion at work so you can see very subtly around the books um, there's like a, there's a sort of it's very subtle to be honest but on the bottom shelf you can see it more there's a very subtle dark halo around the boxes there and um, that's just that's just light that's just trying to mimic how light would or shadows rather would gather around 
behind objects and it just helps to sit things I'm just gonna put this baby down because it's annoyed me <laughs> um, it just helps to sit things in place and stop things looking like they're they're sort of floating above other objects all right so moving on to props I, I think probably the first thing that stood out to me um, with this game is and it, it's not new but this game seems to be doing it a lot more than other games and that's 4k textures everything is everything is 4k textures it's throwing 4k textures at you all the time you're you're looking at dozens of them at any any minute in the game so to explain textures very basically a texture when it comes to video games is kind of what it sounds like um, and it takes the form of a square image uh, that's wrapped around a wireframe mesh or a polygonal mesh uh, the mesh is made tends to be made first um, and it's you know you'll see people in other videos doing polygonal, polygonal mo modeling where they're just making a wireframe model that tends to just be gray when finished and then they'll move it into a, into a second program or more where they'll then texture that mesh uh, and basically that's the process of, of everything almost everything you see in Resident Evil every single object in every single scene including the floor the building everything uh, distant trees is some mesh with a texture wrapped around it so somebody has had to sit down or not somebody but lots of somebody's <laughs> have had to sit down and make all these models and then texture them for realism um, so something like this sofa uh, has ha has to have been made for the game so someone's had to sit down um, make the mesh and then work on texturing it completely artificially no scans maybe just some source photos just like some of the videos I've been doing recently you know I've, I've made a door in um, some of my live streams recently and it's taken four hours to just get to the point where I've got a basic kind of half finished door with some textures on it it takes hours and hours and hours and hours to make each one of these props and then they're probably going through rounds of feedback from a supervisor um, and then you know before they're finally making it into the game and then they're also being optimized so each prop will have various versions of the model that's more and more simplified so they're not just making one mesh they're making ever more simplified versions of the texture in the mesh that are displayed over dist different distances for optimization um, so every surface every prop um, the floor these plants every object uh, it, it looks like it's in 4k at the very least 2k uh, or, or even sometimes multiple 4k textures on everything so any object you want to go up to it, its texture is just pin sharp you know right the way up to as close as you can get in this view um, which just makes everything kind of that bit more believable because you're not seeing pixels anywhere you're not seeing compression you're just seeing kind of pure artwork soft or organic materials are really really difficult to model so um, I'm aware that this game in, in Resident Evil they they claim they use uh, mega scans things but as far as I'm aware mega scans don't really deal with this kind of bespoke furniture they've obviously got bits of furniture but they tend to specialize in more um, organic or ran or kind of like random surfaces so like brickwork um, soil uh, grass leaves um, and surfaces like that that are a bit more generic something tells me pretty much every prop in Resident Evil Village is bespoke for the game has been made by their props team now I'm not saying I know that for sure but I think just judging by how contextual everything is how everything works together um, I don't think any of these props are generic I think they're bespoke for each set now that's not to say you don't get repeated props 
Like, I'm sure if I went round, I could see the same plant twice in this scene, or the same stool. But there's not much of that. There's not much of that at all. Most of what you see is a one-off and is specific to this scene. So that, that cabinet there and that cabinet there look the same, but they've probably got different props inside of them to kind of break them up. Anyway, <laughs> back to the sofa. Um, organic stuff, fabrics are especially hard to do in terms of modeling because you're basically, you know, the, the principles of, of poly modeling are that you're making shapes that go that are straight lines between dots so you're, you're dealing with something very very mechanical anyway you're dealing with something that's very um yeah structured so to make something that's organic is very hard there's lots of different tools and techniques to do that but it's an advanced it's a very advanced um skill level to be able to pull something off that looks real you know what i mean that makes fabrics uh, and organic substances look real um, but this sofa is just you know completely sells it i mean i also realized that this, the blanket and the um the cushions are two or three separate props most likely it could be that the blanket is part of it i don't think so though um but yeah the fabric on that sofa looks n not only like it's relaxed and organic and the creases are all in the right place you can also get a sense of the material like the 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 kind of leatherette texture to it is is just perfect it's just kind of like catching the light it's also worn in the right place it's got dirt in the right place kind of looks like a cheesy heirloom that somebody's got from the from the 70s it's just it's it's just right Okay, so probably here is where things start to get really impressive and a little bit beyond my skill level, <laughs> to say the least. Um, this this uh, hallway with a stairwell and these archways have all been... My guess is they were all designed uh, in just in sketch form first. So they were concepted up in 2D form and then the, the modeling team have had to go along and make little bits of little bits of this scene and put them all together so what you're looking at here is I would say the house itself is one is one big mesh but that mesh has only got some very very simple walls then the walls have been kind of fitted almost like a real house kind of thing you know you build just the bricks and then you come along in a carpenter or joiner does does makes lots of little wooden pieces that fit and make up the overall design and I'm pretty confident that's what's happened here as well because none of these although you know that banister is that banister um, the end here is completely unique you can see the texture goes round the wood moves round that curve so that's been properly UV that's not just a, a mesh with like a wood texture overlaid generically you know so the, the wood texture is going all over the place Th this is an actual individual mesh then the other thing that's happening is if you look down at the, the floor there's there's dust and wear gathering around the base there where it makes contact with the stairs uh, and that's true everywhere here now there's really not much reason for you to go down this hallway <laughs> in the game itself but when you do <laughs> there's all this crazy over the top it's, it's, it, it kind of is a, it'd be over the top for me but it looks to me like what they've done is once they've got these wood pieces in they've then got some kind of decal um, which emulates where diff where walls meet um, and they've they've kind of roughened it up it almost looks like a plasterer has had to kind of use his thumb to round off the edges of the wall there it, it might even be a um, 
a spline that they have, a, to a tool that has a mesh on it, a very simple mesh, that then also has a decal. So it's a kind of very simple curved spline that they can run up the edges of where, ver where the vertices of walls meet to just create that little sense of plaster work going on. And that's that's actually, I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but it's all the way through the game. Here it is again in these corners and then there underneath where the wood is and it just really stops the room looking like a 3D model and turns it yeah all right yeah and it it just stops it looking like a 3D model and helps turn it into something that looks like hands have crafted it there's rough finishes to everything it isn't perfect but it is how a house like that might look where I wonder if I can see there's a, there is a little bug with it where it floats off the surface which again tells me it's actually a separate mesh on a spline that they run into the curves there run into those 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 cavities in order to just finish them off and here it is again catching the light under this um and over this lamp here it's just real attention to detail in these areas that you might walk by closely um, and it's great it doesn't really matter too much that it doesn't perfectly match the wallpaper around it which is very also very subtle um, it's kind of you know it looks like it might be damp or it might be just some kind of mold in the brick it is pretty it's a clever approach. Okay, so this thing. <laughs> so the the stuffed animal and the crossbars, I think, are one uh, mesh. But then the the each object is a separate mesh, and those objects then need to have what's called a bone set into them, and a bone is just basically something which. Um, can then it, it tells the it tells the mesh how to move given certain forces so either an animation or or physics so this isn't this isn't physics driven it's just it's just a canned animation that runs when you when you walk over the object um, but there's a lot of work <laughs> there's a lot of again unnecessary but world building work that's gone into making just this one prop that's just in this in this one moment in the in the game where you walk by and you trigger you trigger these okay I'm just gonna focus on this one for a second because I think I notice a lot of a lot in this that is also elsewhere in the game so there's two there's two interesting things first off the the leaves of the plant are actually just flat objects. There's no, there's no 3D geometry to them. They're just flat planes, if you see what I mean. They are, they are obviously in 3D, but then there's no, there's no depth to the geometry. But yes, they're just flat planes with a transparency. But what's more interesting is the stones that they're set in. Now, there's no, as far as I'm aware, the 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 re engine doesn't do parallax occlusion mapping. It doesn't, which is basically a technique that's used a lot in games, has been for a few years now. It's relatively new, um, but it allows for the impression of 3D depth um, without using geometry, without using mesh data. I don't see it anywhere in this game, but what it means is they've had to replace very, very areas with very small detail with, with actual geometry. So these stones have got they they're at, they're an actual mesh with geometry so that's everywhere in this game and it becomes more apparent later on in the game but it's just these areas of very very dense geometry which ultimately when done right do look better and they give you more they give you more than parallax occlusion mapping because parallax occlusion mapping is just um it's still a flat plane so it might look 3D sometimes, but when it intersects with another object, 
like in this case when a leaf penetrates it you you don't actually get any um interaction with that you don't see the the intersecting object obscuring or or being obscured by the geometry underneath so in the long run using using detail um, polygons it is better but massively costly so it has to be used very cleverly i think in my opinion it's much harder to work with from a development standpoint than just using um, parallax occlusion so yeah on the same note as that i think the floor is meshes so i can see them picking out um hard edges and then being anti-aliased so this is where parallax occlusion mapping works really well in other settings so you you can create a sense of bump and depth to a surface without it actually being there but in resident evil it's actual geometry like each of each of these parquet floorboards um, is a piece of geometry it's a it's a cube or at least the top surface of a cube with an indentation in you're actually getting depth there again you can't even crouch in this scene to look at it closely but it just is that little bit better in certain situations because it's real it's real geometry okay last thing i'm going to talk about is is wood in this game because it's just it's just great <laughs> it's just really good so i think i don't think resident evil in its current form so in terms of resident evil 7 and resident evil 8 would exist if it weren't for playable trailer the silent hills demo um that hideo kojima made and in that demo he was showing off because it again it's a small it tends to be small spaces where you can predictably guess where the user is going to go it's not a massive open world game so you can really focus on those small spaces and build very very detailed props for them because you you know the player is not going to go anywhere else they're stuck in this small space um, and so in in PT they really took the time to get every piece of furniture, every banister, every every surface as as good as it could be, uh, and and Capcom have kind of Capcom have kind of run wild with that. They really mastered wood furniture specifically. Like their their wood prop, the wood props throughout this entire game are just perfect. They're just so they really really sell it. And they've gone that extra mile to create um, geometric in inscriptions on them. So as in, they've used mesh geometry to create the inscriptions. And th this piece of furniture kind of shows it off where you can see that the wood carvings in the doors are actual geometry. And I think even some in the, yeah, even, even the carvings in the... Um, in the drawers here these small little intricate details are actual geometry um they're not parallax occlusion and that's what really makes the furniture in this game believable it just it's just above and beyond what it needs to be <laughs> as usual but it really sells it it really makes not only individual pieces of furniture look solid and heavy and old and used um, and, and like they should be there but it makes entire rooms seem kind of worn in everything is it's got a weight and it's got an impression of that get, that tells you that it should be there it's, and it's it's it has a weight in the room it just yeah it just really really sells it 